Okay, so I said I was going to make a video um, explaining the desensitization, the D, whatever, desensitizing knock sensors uh, on Dodges, okay? So we're going to go to this file here. This is my personal truck. Now, my knock sensors right now are currently set 100% to stock. So yeah, on my personal vehicle, I run knock per cylinder. Uh, that way, if the whole motor isn't suffering for one cylinder um, instead of global and that's your personal choice so nothing to be said there knock threshold this is a voltage this is rpm versus air charge versus uh the knock sensor voltage now 700 milligrams of air charge is 0.7 uh grams whatever uh let's go back over here once okay it's a random log I took of my RAM, which doesn't really, I don't really know if it even shows any knock on this exact log. Uh, I get knock in a few spots up top, so maybe I can see if I can get something to show up. Okay, right there, 0.3 knock, okay? Now, you're going to want to log knock sensor voltage, so, so we got knock fuel retard here of 1 degree, knock sensor voltage 0 0.85 on 1, 1.59 on 2, <laughs> meaning that the knock is on one side of the motor or the other, obviously. So we have 1.59 volts. We have 0 0.7, so 700 air charge. And we have 6,000 RPM. Okay, so let's go back here. So these should just, these numbers should stay going, okay? So, you know, look how low this number is here. 0.3 volts, okay? 1.59 volts. Now, the voltage is difficult because every vehicle is going to run a different amount of voltage uh, when the knock happens uh, based on how far away the knock is, um, other noises in the area, headers, exhaust, things like that, um, pulleys, motor mounts, whatever. So the first thing to do, uh, me personally, is, now this is going to be a little bit more difficult, so you need to go through your file under spark under advance and you need to get rid of any modifier any modifier at all barometric pressure engine coolant temp transient you're going to get rid of any modifier that way you're running on true tables okay um and then the thing is is you got your base table going uh when you're wanting to check stuff on your base table you're really not going to want to get into power enrichment so one of the things you can do which may help let's take a look at what these tables look like here so we got 0.3 to 0.93 so copy this whole table here and paste it here mm, no it doesn't work like that be nice if it did unfortunately it doesn't so um, these tables honestly should kind of match closely um, but it, it'd be easier if it does so if you could um, modify these air charges here to match these uh, or copy and paste the ones that transition over or you can just leave it stock uh, what's going to happen is that um, the vehicle when you're driving is going to try to find a timing in between these two tables uh, during certain situations which can show up as knock retard but there is no knock retard it's just it pulling timing um, but essentially you're going to want to start off with your base throttles you're going to want to drive around like normal get on it a little bit but not really get on it where it wants to go into power enrichment mode things like that and you want to collect as much data as you can okay when you're collecting the data you're going to want to get a see i have a, a retard chart and a retard wide open throttle chart so i can uh, log where it's actually happening you can see that well these numbers are the same on here because this is the wrong layout but you'd want to have these numbers match your your graph here 
So for those of you who don't know how to make histograms, you want to have your RPMs and your air charge. See RPMs, air charge, spark retard. I mean, you can pretty much copy this. Just make sure you use the right information. Uh, you go back here, you right click here. These are your rows. You click copy labels, columns, copy labels. It's super easy to do. Just make sure when you get to it, you have anything that you're trying to log in here and preferably in here as well. Okay. Now, if, you're, if you drive around and you notice a lot of knock retard is showing up, but these voltages numbers aren't very high, uh, it brings you to your step of desensitization, okay? Your desensitizing step is very important to be done the correct way. Um, it, and basically for me, um, I find myself race fuel or ethanol, and I get my octane to about 100 in my vehicle. Once your octane's in 100, drive around and collect the data is again. Now, technically, the higher fuel on a car that has spark uh, stock spark tables, uh, it'll be mainly zeros because the fuel uh, takes away any of the real knock. Whatever's left after you take away the real knock is your uh, false knock, what we would call it. So what we do for false knock is, let's say I got race fuel in, okay? And these is, this is the only stuff I can find. You know, let's take a look, see if I can find another spot where it's happening. Well, I think that's the exact same spot. Let's see if I can find another one. This log is awful for this. I should wish I could have used a different one. Let's see if I can get a different log here. Here's some more knock, okay. Uh, let's take a look here for knock sensor voltage. Here's a good example. We have 0 0.22, 0 0.22, 0 0.26 volts. <sighs> let's say we have the race fuel in and we're getting this. Um, we go from there and we check the graph. So we're looking at 1600 RPMs we're looking at 0.6 air charge. So, just say cylinder one. 1600 RPMs, 0.6. So look at that number, 0.278. So that's 278. What do we got here? 260. Uh, that's definitely close enough to set off a knock and it might've been a different cylinder. Um, one of the things you can do, and I don't know if, I don't remember off the top of my head, is you can actually put each cylinder up and try, in certain vehicles, you can try to see which cylinders the knock is actually occurring in. Um, and I, I just, I don't remember if you can do it on this Hemi or not. So what you wanna do is you wanna right click in here, add channels, go to knock, see if you can find knock per cylinder, and then you can log per cylinder, and you can adjust it from there. So let's say, let's say this reading was on cylinder one. Uh, if it was on cylinder one, you'd go through and you want to desensitize it by a percentage. So let's pick 5% once and see where that gets us. Not bad, small gain. So at that point you drive it again and see if it goes away. Uh, now this should be, should, should be take, shouldn't be taken lightly because um, you could cover up real knock if not done properly. So you want to keep driving and checking it, driving and checking it with a high octane fuel uh, because you're trying to weed out the false knock. Um, now if it feels safer about it, you can go like this and just desensitize it right there. Um, Dodge oversensitizes their knock sensors in the factory and that's pretty much a known fact. Most tuners uh, for Dodge and Subaru and Mazda and things like that, uh, one of the first things they do is uh, take away the knock sensor sensitivity. Um, I know I have a friend who does a lot of Subarus and picks up like 35 horse on Subarus just by changing the knock sensor settings. Um, now, if you can't, 
pinpoint the knock to a single cylinder, you're gonna wanna do the same thing to each cylinder. So if, if 5%, you do 5% to every cylinder. And if that works, it works. If you have to do more, you have to do more. Uh, but like I said, the best way to do it is see if you can knock it down to cylinder by cylinder. Um, but like I said, you, you need to have some sort of a high octane fuel in. You get around 100 octane in one of these vehicles, you should not have any type of knock, um, especially on stock on stock timing tables. Um, you know, one of the things to be careful about is you need to redo this whole situation when you go to long tubes because long tubes produce more noise. Uh, there's all kinds of, it doesn't hurt to do this every few months as you're perfecting your own personal file to make sure that you have things exact because Hemis do not like knock. Hemis do not like spark. They do not like ignition. They are prone to completely destroying pistons without a second thought. Um, you know, a, a guy like me, I could drive around on a hot tune for years without blowing my motor. I know people that you put a hot tune on their vehicle, they'll blow it up before they get down the road. Um, Hemis, Hemis need to be protected. And one of the biggest things I can tell you with Hemis is that you honestly should look into ethanol or higher octane fuel or possibly look into, um, running a higher octane fuel just so you know you're going to get on it you know things like that just just to be safe because you know you'd hate to lose a three to seven thousand dollar motor for no reason you know as you can see here we're in like a cruising rpm and we have knock retard and we shouldn't have knock retard i mean look at these volts these voltages are low um and this is an oversensitivity dodge um and i believe that in this tune we had 91 fuel in um so that tells you how oversensitive they can be. Um, you can see the voltage kind of stays right around the same. So once in a while it bumps up. But like I said, once you get the around 100 octane fuel in, you'll be able to see what is false knock. Um, one of the things that I do recommend, I'm sorry I ramble a little bit. One of the things that I do recommend is having your spark, and I've changed my spark tables recently, but having your sparks very similar to each other. Um, that way you're not, it's not trying to fight between tables. So, you know, this 93 and this 93 table should, honestly, they should match each other. You know, this 54, 50, this range here should be the same as this here. So keep that in mind, the closer these tables are together, the less likely you're going to see some weird, uh, false knock, um, because you're going to get false knock because it's trying to find a happy medium between this number and this number. So keep that in mind. Um, don't go too far on this if you don't understand. Uh, if you don't understand, feel free to message me and I will message you back and kind of try to help out or help understand um, or give people the, I guess, the the help I, I don't know uh i'll do my best to help you understand what exactly is happening here so you can kind of uh get a better understanding yourself um after i turn this video off i'm going to uh make these maps very close to each other and i'm going to smooth out some issues in here kind of like this weird this weird little bubble right here so i think that that's that should be it